you could just introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Carla Pugh, Assistant Professor of Surgery at Northwestern University and Director of Northwestern Center for Advanced Surgical Education. Great. And uh, what made you decide to become a scientist? Was there a single moment or was there a person who inspired you? Or I actually decided that I wanted to become a doctor when I was five years old. Uh, the inspiration there was stories that my family told me about my grandmother who was a midwife, but I didn't understand that when they were telling me the story. They told me about all of the uh, babies that she delivered. Um, she was also a veterinarian. I mean, so my family, at least my grandfather and, you know, the folks in previous generations in my family grew up on a farm. And so she delivered all of my aunts and uncles. She delivered all of the, the calves and, you know, other animals and did surgery and so when they told me the stories about things that she did I thought this woman is absolutely fascinating it has an exciting life and that's exactly what I want to do so I made up my mind when I was five great and did you enjoy your science classes growing up and stuff like that or was I it did. sort of paying your dues to get to be a doctor you know if um, for the most part I have fond memories of the science classes that I took I think some of the other classes that just weren't as fun for me like history was it at least at that time and it may have been the media you know we're not I wasn't as lucky to have Google and all of these other things where you could sort of look up things yourself but history was I'm a very hands-on very visual learner and our history books were just a bunch of words so that wasn't fun for me but our science classes were great they were all hands-on and you know we really got to learn science by doing and that was definitely the best venue for did you have a favorite kind of science growing up? Were you more into biology or chemistry or all of it piqued your interest? Uh, there were things about each one. Chemistry, I definitely remember um, being excited just seeing two different chemicals that both look like water, but then when you mix them together, colors changed, you know, things smoked, and you've got, got a realization that there, there, there's some definite differences in the properties of, of the substances that we were using. So that was very interesting. Um, then with the biology, just really, it was kind of overwhelming. Biology, it was great, but you know, you just learn all the different um, species and the whole, you know, ontology of different flowers, different birds, and the animals, and you know, it was, it was, it was a bit overwhelming, but lots of fun. Great. Maybe you could talk a little bit about your job now, both what your job description is sort of in a broad sense and what that means you're doing from, you know, on any given day. So now um, that's flipping the script forward several, several years, I should say, <laughs> you know. Um, and I became a surgeon. I didn't become a midwife or a veterinarian, but I still, you know, I've delivered a few babies, some plastic, some real. And I... Uh, Right now, I basically, my career centers around both doing surgery as well as using technology for education. And after doing my surgery training, I went to get a PhD in education, as if that's not enough schooling. But I went back and I would encourage anyone to do it. It was great. Um, and I basically am able to combine two fields um, that people don't normally get a chance to do, and it's a lot of fun. And I find that I have a lot to offer because I went back to school to get the PhD. Um, Basically, what I do, I spend half of my time, um, a typical week for me, if you will, I spend half of my time in the operating room or in clinic taking care of patients. And then the other time I spend in the lab either um, teaching using technology or um, analyzing data that I've collected with the simulated teaching tools that I use. So uh, this week, for example, um, what's today? Today's Wednesday, right? Is it? I think it's Wednesday, yeah. So yesterday I was in clinic and I was saw, you know, 50 patients in clinic with various disorders. We had a patient that had a lipoma, a big huge lesion on his arm that needs to be excised, and we have other patients that have colon cancer and all of those problems. So we see patients and look at their CT scans and get them ready for surgery, which I will be doing on Friday of this week. But in the interim, today we had a skills lab for several high school students who were interested in science careers and we put on a mini residency for them. So they came here this morning and they learned how to use a scalpel, they learned how to use a needle and syringe, and they learned how to use um, a needle driver, suture, forceps, and all the things that we use to suture wounds together. And so 
that is that's one of the activities that we do from a training perspective using technology. We train high school students that may be interested in health careers. We train surgeons or surgeons in training who are wanting to learn um, surgical procedures. And then we also do training courses when there are new instruments that are developed in surgery. So there may be a senior doctor who's famous in his own right who knows how to do a pancreas surgery and then there's some new instrument that gets developed along the way. He'll come to our lab and learn how to use that instrument in a simulated environment. So that's what I do. Cool. And what's your favorite part of the job? Wow. I have two competing favorites. My favorite is being in the operating room and getting a sense of how a pathologic process has changed the normal anatomy within a human being and then taking great pride in my ability to be able to take out the pathology and put the normal back together and then see the patient the next morning and they feel better. That's, there's nothing that can really, really compare to that. Uh, the next best, obviously, is giving someone an experience here in a laboratory, and I'll never forget, I had a, a, we did a teaching lab in London with one of my colleagues, and there was a student who, after we trained them how to do exam on several different simulated patients, she was actually very upset. She said, this was the best training experience I ever had, and I wish that we had this training experience before I ever touched a patient. That is means that, you know, that I'm providing opportunities for people that they think are valuable and that are really necessary. So that from the teaching end is, is, is a great experience. What would you say is the toughest thing in your job? Well, then the sort of the exact opposites in both of those scenarios. So, you know, talking to a family, I mean, there's, there's death and dying in what I do, and it's not easy for anybody. Um, and so when... You have to explain to family members. I think the worst case really is not that someone passed away, but really someone who may be in a coma, comatose state, and really um, are only their life is only being kept alive by artificial means, medications, and the ventilator. And to have that discussion with the family and says, "Well, you know, your family member is still breathing, but we're really breathing for them. Their heart's still beating, but we're giving a bunch of medication," and then working through the emotions of trying to make a decision, you know, with a family to say, you know, this is really the end. It's actually easy, it's, it's different when someone comes in and they've already passed away and I'm, there's no discussion really. I just have to say, you know, we're sorry we weren't able to save them or, you know, when they came in, there was nothing we could do. It's very different when you're standing there with someone who is still warm, who can still sometimes look at you, but there's really nothing there and that's the hardest uh, thing to do. So, um, what advice would you have for somebody who's who's interested in getting into science or or getting into something even more specifically like you do? It depends on where you are in your career. I guess the advice is all the same. Stick to it. Believe you can do it, and don't let anybody discourage you. Otherwise, I mean, it, it's a long haul. It's a long process, but um, I, it's worth it in the end. I mean, I, I think that. And I've said it before, I think the, the people who want to go for the rich, get rich quick schemes, they work for some people, most people, it doesn't work. And so you, you'll be disappointed if you, you know, go for the bling bling and the money up front and, you know, the education is long lasting. No one can ever take your degree away from you. Um, you will always be able to, to turn that around and to you know, something that shows that you've done the work, but, you know, you, you get, you know, million dollars quick and you spend it all on your Mercedes and your, you know, maybe a convertible, uh, what's those other cool cars, convertible Bentley or something like that, those things are fun and great, but, you know, if you don't have a job to sustain that kind of lifestyle, <laughs> guess what, you know, Repo Man's going to come get your car. <laughs> So, I, I mean, that would be my advice, really. If you, if you like the kind of lifestyle, you got to get a job that supports it. Okay, great. Thank you.